Hello, everybody. This is Josue, one of the co-founders of uh, Empathy Cafe. And we are doing a series. Uh, we are having a one-on-one -on -one conversations with many people. You know that everybody's got a story that can change your heart. Today, we are going to talk about Alex um, and his story. So we want to welcome Alex. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing great. Okay. Before... Okay, go introduce yourself, and I want to say something about you. All right. <laughs> My name is Alex, and that's all you really that you really need to know about me. I'm a regular guy. <laughs> uh, you're you are everything but regular, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to introduce you? <laughs> I think you might have to, you know, because I think that's the only interesting thing about me. All right. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something about Alex that says a lot about me. Alex is my personal social media filter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever I find something on, on Facebook that is funny, 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 but highly <laughs> inappropriate, <laughs> I, I, I feel the need to share because it's funny, but I cannot share in public because it would be inappropriate. So what do I do? What do I do, Alex? You send it to me. I, I, I am your dark place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the same thing goes around as well. You, it's it, it some is, interesting it, things too. It is true. It is, it is true. <laughs> uh, Alex, when, we, when, when did we meet? We are back like a... Five, six, seven years? I think 2014, when you came to Winnipeg, you were you right. came to Pastor Henderson. And I think at the time I was church planting. I wasn't even pastoring a church yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we met in Winnipeg. Um, Alex is a, is a high priest. Uh <laughs> I'm a wizard. I'm a high priest wizard. <laughs> he's a pastor and uh, um, he's a musician and he's a bodybuilder as well I try, um, I try and he's a, he's a husband um, and many other things um, he, you're, you're, how, how much longer do you have to finish your masters? Um, I just finished it Actually. You just finished. Congratulations! Well, you know, I consider it being done. I, I take my final exams tomorrow, and I only have two exams. And I'm kind of, you know, pulling a YOLO. I'm kind of over it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> one of them, it's like I think I know the material well enough, and the other one is, I'm just gonna study um, for the rest of the evening and then just wing it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so you you have two exams tomorrow, and that's why you have time to go live. That's, yeah, that's how, <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> All right. So, um, our friends from from Facebook have sent us uh, uh, questions. Oh, Sabrina is saying congratulations, Alex. You know, Sabrina from Henderson Highway. Oh, thank and you. And she's the co-founder of uh, of Empathy Cafe, and I'm going to ask you a few questions that our friends from from Facebook have asked. Uh, the first one is this, this whole COVID-19 pandemic that we're living is, do you hope to go back to life as it was or will you live differently? Man, you know, I'd like to say that I'm going to continue living my life as it always was. Uh, but I think that there is going to be this transition period between when the quarantine stops and then in, for the next several months, maybe even years, about people being cautious of how they interact with, with one another, how quickly they go out, whether people mm -hmm. are wearing masks, how close they stand to one another. Um, it's going to take a while before we, you know, that suspicion of someone coughing or that suspicion of someone just sneezing of yeah. for it that to, to go away, you know, for a while, I think it's going to be right there in our conscience. So it's going to affect um, how we interact with strangers, how we interact with people at the grocery store, at the gym, mm. the places of, in our workplace. Um, but as far as like my lifestyle, 
um, I'm a person of routine. Um, so I think that my routine is not really going to change, but I think what is going to change um, until it is going to change is my consciousness of how I interact with others as, a, as the quarantine, mm -hmm. lives, you know, yeah. and at the end of that, you know, just based on what that's going to do, you're going to develop new habits and those new habits are going to become new behavior. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I think when we come to that part, to, to that fork in the road, you know, we need to be conscious. At least I'm going to need to be conscious about how I interact with others to make sure that I'm still not treating people like they're sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you love to hack people, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am, I don't like touching I know, I, know. I, 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 I do. Like hugging, I do like hugging my wife. I like hugging my friends. Um, to some degree, I like loving strain, uh, hugging strangers. You know, and I am Latino, so we do do that one two, yeah, on, on the cheek. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I, I. Other than that, I don't really like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I uh, yeah. the viewers. Uh, please. Please forgive me if you see this in Alex. It's, it's one of the things that I enjoy the most. Uh, that he lets me to tease him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you're right. How we interact with other people. Yesterday, for example, um, I, I, I went for a walk with my daughters. We went outside. We live in a in a subdivision that I don't know many people usually um, walking around. We only encounter two people. But oh man, we were freaked out about crossing our path. So uh, one person, the first one, they crossed to the other side of the the street like a, a block before we um, we crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, another person that was walking a door, um, we were walking on the sidewalk sidewalk and this lady went with her dog still on the side of the street but on the grass side as close as she could to the asphalt right and we nodded and she said keep safe i said yeah keep safe you too and then the third person um we actually crossed the street um in the middle, there was no way to cross, but we actually crossed the street because we didn't want to be on the same sidewalk. So uh, that is weird. It is weird. That is weird. It's it, it's kind of like that moment where you want to, where the polite thing to do is also the rude thing to do. <laughs> I know, right? So it, it's know. almost, it's like cognitive dissonance, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything that uh, you say, okay, I never noticed this before, or I took it for granted, but this whole situation has um, helped me see it in a new light and I no longer will take this for granted. Can you name some or one if you have? Yeah, for sure. I think that one of those, one of the things that I, I think I take for granted is um, it's time. Hmm. And we were actually talking about this before the, before uh, we went live was that my life goes about a hundred miles per hour and it's always been that way. And I've noticed that people like to brag about how busy they mm -hmm. are it's almost like a badge of honor that people yeah. wear and they like to announce it um but really busyness and hurry it's violence to the soul is really what it mm. is um can you, what can you say that again it's it's, it's a quotable <laughs> thing uh Businesses, business busyness being in a rush it, it's violence to the soul oh deep and you think about it, you know, like wisdom takes time, love mm. takes time, growth takes time, hurry and being in a rush doesn't have time. Um, so we don't have time for love. We don't have time for wisdom. We don't have time for growth, you know, so we're left foolish, loveless and stagnant. Um, mm -hmm. 
we wear something as a badge of honor that really makes us worse, not better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, and my life generally goes pretty quickly. And, you know, in the last few years, I've tried to not announce how busy I am because I realize that this is not a good thing. It's actually a vice, something I need to start trimming down to make time for things that are actually um, valuable. And I know that I was always praying at night with my wife. We'd always pray like, God, give us more time. God, give us more time. You know, if we can have just one more hour in the day, Lord, just give us more time. And now God has given us an abundance of time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of it. And it's interesting because I know I'm not the only one that's always asking God for more time. There's a bunch of people asking God for more time. And the strange thing is that most of us, uh, just based on what I can see on Instagram and Facebook, are not thanking God for it or thanking the universe mm. or whoever you thank for it. But we're complaining about receiving what we have been asking for, mm. you know. And that's a very interesting thing. And I realize now that what we need is not more time because let's say God were to actually make the day longer, you know, or God were to make the week longer, you know, by some happenstance, just the, the week and the day would get yeah. bigger. We would just find other things to fill it with. And we'd be just as tired as we that's were true. before, you know, like during the, I think it was the French revolution. What was it that they tried to make the week 10 days? That's right, with Napoleon. Yeah, they tried to make the week 10 days and people just burnt out, got more angry, were more stressful, and the economy just crashed, you know, because mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really make much of a difference if we were to have more of that, you know. Um, it's really a matter of what do we find important to fill this, this time with, you know. And yeah. for myself, um, now that I have this big, you know, this big gift, you know, you make an audit. And I realize that those things that do make me better, that do enrich me, the things that make me more loving, more wise, more that help me grow, those things are the first things that went out the window when I got busy. And now, you know, I realize, oh, shoot, I'm doing them again in this entire quarantine. You know, I have that quiet time in the morning, uh, talking with God, devotions, reading, um, and I, I think I'm better for it. So that's something that I think I'm going to continue doing even after all this is over and constantly auditing my time. That is wonderful. But do you think is is it realistic to expect that all of us can do that? Let me let let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, because I think ultimately that's the goal. Um, but there is a song, my my favorite by far, my favorite song from 21 Pilots is the one that he talks what happened when his car stereo was stolen. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, in, in other words, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing here. He says, there's this silence. I feel like screaming. I I don't know what to do with so much silence. I'm, I'm, I'm left alone with my thoughts. I'm left alone with my soul, and I don't, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know? So what do you think makes a difference? How can we go from, I have this silence, this this radio silence, this this time, let's, let's put time with mm -hmm. silence, suddenly, how can I go from, now I'm left alone with this auditing, this auditing is, is is making me very nervous. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I'm, I'm I'm I have time to think of all the ghosts in my life. I have time to think of all the things I have done wrong. I have to time to think of how messed my relationship is. Mm -hmm. How 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 can we go from there to what you were talking of? What I can grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think that the reason many of us stay busy is mostly to run away from that silence. Mm. Um, like in the song, the reason he wanted, the reason he missed his stereo was because the stereo didn't allow him or it was an excuse for him to not have to think about those things. Yeah. You know, and this is just my opinion. This is my opinion. 
And it's a pattern that I've noticed on the internet that there's a lot of people that will post things about being having anxiety. Of uh, people post a lot of things about depression, mm -hmm. um, and raising awareness. And I believe that there are people who have real anxiety. And what I mean by anxiety, I don't mean it in like I'm nervous before a test. I mean like it's a clinical anxiety that you need treatment for. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a real thing. And the same thing for depression. Mm -hmm. But then there's other people who don't have that. They are just um, lazy. And then they want to jump on that bandwagon, associate with that, you know, that real issue. And I think that cheapens it because instead of people just becoming more resilient, mm -hmm. they want to, you know, be like, they want to find an excuse why they are the way that they are and the reason they're not getting any better. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's just a matter of being more disciplined for some people. And, uh, and I, of course, I want to distinguish between people who have a real issue within the people who are just being lazy you know, or just too scared, really, because you know, that silent time that we have with ourselves all this time, it's kind of like, oh, man, that thing I really been avoiding to think about that resentment, that anger, that one time I got hurt. Now we really have to face it, you know, mm -hmm. and not facing these things really don't make us any better. They don't make us any wiser. They don't make us any stronger. You know, I read a book recently that said that uh, discipline makes puts on the schedule a time to suffer in the day and and that's what makes you grow and i think about like my time at the gym where it's scheduled in my day a time to suffer people think oh alex goes to the gym he enjoys it i hate it <laughs> you know like it, it's pain it hurts um and then i schedule time to read books People think I love reading. I actually hate reading, but I love growing. And the only way I can grow and learn things best is when I read. So I schedule that in there. I schedule that suffering in there, you know, um, and that suffering helps me grow. One helps me get stronger physically. The other one helps me get stronger mentally. And now there's that growth of growing emotionally. How do I grow emotionally? I don't grow emotionally by getting my heart broken every time I go out the door. Help me find someone who, to break my heart. But really, the way you grow in that is uh, by looking inside of you and looking in your, dead in the eyes at one thing that you just haven't been wanting to think about and learning because we can't escape our problems. We can't escape our issues. All we can really do is learn how to exist with them in a way that doesn't overwhelm us. Mm -hmm. You know, like I like I'm reading a book right now called Care for the Soul and I love how he says in the beginning of the book that it's not cure for the soul, it's care. Because cure makes this idea that there's going to come this point where you're not suffering with this anymore. It's not there anymore, yeah. you know? But care is this concept of it's ongoing. You're looking at something that it's going to constantly be happening, you know? And I believe that that part where you take time to really wrestle and you know, be pained in a day with something you want to ignore gives you a soul resilience. It's care for the soul, this long-term care for it so that you can become emotionally stronger, um, emotionally more resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking on what you just said about the difference between the care and the care, um, uh, recently uh, there are... Um, Many more people that are popping up on on our news feeds uh, with podcasts and uh, and sermons online, and they go live. They have devotions and all those things more, way more than 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 it was before because they they don't have they they do have time to do that, and they kind of go to the places or the homes, so they do it online. And and and, and I've seen a. a a train in some in some circles where um, if you pray enough if you have enough faith you won't get COVID-19 <laughs> or um, if 
for example, this one that is just it's more difficult to uh, to see the um, the danger in it. I believe is like a, if you feel discouraged these days, it is because you are not close enough to Jesus. You need to pray more. And then you will feel okay. So, are are we using prayer and communication with Jesus or relationship with Jesus as a way to cure our problems? And if our problems or our social anxiety with these events are not cured, that means that we are not close enough to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think that, um, I think that we have to do what we can and God does what we can't. You know what I mean? Um, our relationship with, 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 with God and Jesus doesn't ensure that we're never going to get sick, that we're never going to face trials and tribulations in life. That's not what it means, you know? Um... So I think we all have to do our part in not not getting sick. You know, God can provide for you a mask. God can provide for you medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but you actually have to take the, the, the precaution and wear that mask. You know, like I saw this meme recently. I think you posted it up. Did you post it up recently? Probably. It was probably you about like this this guy who's walking down the street and being like, I have faith in God. Oh, yes, yes, I need both sick, that. You know, and then um, he gets sick. He goes, God, why did I get sick? And God's like, I gave you a mask. I gave you, mm -hmm. I, told, I gave you a warning to stay at home. This is, this is not God's fault. This is, this is, um, your own doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, the, 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 the cure and the, care for this so that that is that is um that is deep man we we i put this on facebook as well god is not a genie mm -hmm. right that oh i believe in god he's gonna he's gonna cure me even my soul he's gonna answer all my questions you actually may have more questions <laughs> than not, the closer you are to Jesus, the closer you are to God, the more questions you ask because you realize things that you never thought of before, right? Mm -hmm. But that is, that is, that is, that is very I, I, I like to think of my life, like I think that's the difference between, um, I think that a lot of people think that living a life of faith means living a life of um, where a passive life. Mm -hmm. It's like living a life of faith is very passive. Wait, waiting the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, yeah. Um, but I think that what living a life of faith means, it actually means living a life of wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's really what living a life of faith means um, there's a song that says, Lord, help me count my days that I may be wise. You know, and really what the what the psalmist is asking for is that God may make him conscious about the time that he has. And by being conscious about how much time he has, that his life is short, that will make him be wiser in how he wastes his time and how he invests his time. You know, because a lot of us can really become unaware really of how much time we have in our hands. And that's why we start spending so much time on our cell phones, so much time in our computers, um, because we're not aware of the time that we actually have. And the psalmist is saying like, God, and this is a time when there is no computers, no laptops. And he asked God, God, make me aware of this time that I have, that I may be wise with it. Because if I realize how little I have, you know, kind of like money, the moment you realize how little you have, you start being more responsible with it, you know? Like, help me be conscious of this, that I may live a more wise life. Um, and I think that that is really what faith is. Faith is a matter of living a life that is that is wise. Um, and wisdom is not just a matter of, you know, knowledge. 
but wisdom is more of a holistic thing, you know, of what we learn from all of our experiences. Sorry. Um, the international from my side um, disconnected. So I had to no. leave back. I apologize. We'll come back again. <laughs> myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, from your perspective, uh, like, like I, I see you as a guy, sorry, as a man. A boy. <laughs> a boy. A boy. <laughs> uh, who, um, who as, like you said earlier that you're a man of um, routine. You like having your routine, and that uh, your routine is what you schedule things for. Your schedule, your your life in general, in in a in a way that can help you grow. So mm -hmm. um, somehow I, I see that as as a plus in circumstances like this one, because it it has prepared you to face um, problems in life with. Um, a helpful and positive attitude. What what is true to is that that's not the the, the experience of millions of people. Mm -hmm. And you read the news, you go to NPR. I don't go to CNN or Fox anymore. I go to NPR or uh, CBC Canada. You, you go to 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 places where there is no sensationalism. And you see actually a pretty um, real picture of how many people are actually suffering without sensationalism, just truly suffering. And uh, both because of their work situation or the health situation and also because of their um the point in life uh, in their emotional life that uh, this is completely destabilizing I'm, I'm i'm using a horrible english here because i'm trying to think as i talk and that doesn't work for me but this has shattered their world both financially physically and emotionally um, seeing the world around you, um, suffering and, and breaking and not knowing how to react to this and how to grow in this, has this, is this experience, experience making you more empathetic of the people around you? Or uh, it has made you feel more like a self-protective. Oh uh, well, I'm I'm glad I have this lifestyle. The mm -hmm. house been dealing with this. Yeah. How this is, 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 is so you know, it's very strange because you know, um, I believe that uh, I believe in rational compassion. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and. And I believe that I have a good measure of, of, of empathy, but I really, my empathy is not my moral guide, you know? Um, but I, I do have a deep empathy for people who are not doing as well as I am. Mm -hmm. you know? And that is a very unfortunate situation. Um, and, and the reason is because, you know, there's moments in my life when I haven't had money. Uh, there's moments in my life when I ha my future has been unsure. Um, in fact, just three years ago when I made the transition to come here, um, Chelsea and I's light bill got, our, 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 our lights got turned off. <laughs> and our bank, our golden goose that we had uh, money went dry. And all that money I had built up for five years to buy a house, right now it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I, I've had some moments of financial trouble and like not sure what the future holds. And I can only imagine what that might be like when you start adding other components in there. 
so I do have this level of empathy that comes from my heart because I feel for them, you know, I yeah. feel for, for, for people. Uh, but really, um, because of the situation, there's very limited things that I can actually do based on how much, when, if I'm rational about it, based on how much money I have in my bank account, what mm -hmm. I can actually do, what my limitations are is very little that I can do um, without putting myself at risk and my family at risk or even tr putting the people I'm trying to help yeah. at risk, you know? Um, so I do have like empathy. I don't think it's made me more empathetic, but it does uh, bring out empathy. But how do I deal with that feeling of I want to do something, but I can't. And I think that some people will get that feeling and feel helpless, like, mm -hmm. or have like a survivor's guilt. How can I live so comfortably while other people suffer so deeply, you know, and that's something that mm -hmm. like an empath. Um, and studies show that people who do that tend to be unhappier than the people who suffer themselves. Um, Indeed. You know, so um, really lately I've been reading books on Stoic philosophy. Um, I recently read a book by Marcus Aurelius. He's a Stoic philosopher, a Roman emperor. Um, I just re read, I'm reading right now through the philosophy of Seneca, which is another Stoic um, philosopher, and Epictetus. I'm also reading his, his book, um, you know, stoic philosophers of the greek world and something that is a common thing in stoic philosophy is not making value judgments but seeing as the obstacle as the way so like when something bad happens people will make a, a value judgment about it you know mm -hmm. they'll be like for example if you think you're overweight you'll look in the mirror and you might say the truth i'm fat but some people don't say that what some people say is I look like a whale and this yeah. is terrible. Yeah. You know, you're making a value judgment and that value judgment creates a turmoil inside of your mind. Mm -hmm. you know? And some people will go through this experience and make value judgments about things. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. And then we start listing how terrible it is. And that creates turmoil inside of our minds. You know, um, we're letting outside experiences affect our, our morality, our ethics and our peace. Um, but Stoic philosophy would take this obstacle and say the obstacle is the way. The obstacle is actually what's going to make us stronger. The obstacle is the direction we're going to go to and face, what, not actually try to avoid um, mm -hmm. and not let the outside environment change our peace, change our mindset, but rather we see it as this is the way, you yeah. know? So I see this, this, this whole thing. And of course, my empathy, go. I, I'm, I'm very empathetic towards the people who are suffering. Um, but I can't feel this sense of helplessness. You know, I have to say, well, what are the facts? And the facts are that um, in 2008, when that recession happened, eventually we came back. Yeah. And it's not a fact that we're going to come back, but that's something to keep in mind. You know, mm -hmm. that, that that we can come back. My yeah. my dad lost his job during that time and now he has a job again, you know. So the the facts are not that we are lost. The facts are not that we're helpless. The, the facts is not that the world is ending. The facts are not that Jesus is coming tomorrow. Those are not <laughs> those are not the facts. You know, the facts are you're at home and you're healthy. The facts yeah. are that you are still alive. The facts are that the future is not has not come yet. And the facts are that we we still have things to hope for, you know, mm -hmm. and if we keep our minds there, then I think that we can face this obstacle as the way and uh, and be resilient on the other side of it, you know, a little bit more than what you asked, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, perfect. I, I I enjoy I enjoy talking with you because uh, every time we talk, um, you teach me something new. I I, I learn something new. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I've told you before, you you speak with a cadence. Cadence. I, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, you you, uh, you. I don't know. I love how you talk. <laughs> I, love, oh, I love how you talk. I think it's it's, it's a it's a learning. There is this wisdom. There is a um, there is there is a lot of wisdom. I I, so, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Alex. 
congratulations on your almost over. <laughs> almost there. When, I, when will you start working? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, they, they called me last week. Um, the church called me last week to tell me that they don't know. <laughs> so a lot of things. As are they pay you, you're fine. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what the facts are. <laughs> yeah, tell me about the facts. What are the facts? The facts are. Remember, we are live. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the facts are that I am going to know where I'm going in the next two weeks, and that I may not be moving till mid summer. Um, okay. so those are the facts. Um, what is the hope? The hope is that I'll be pastoring by the end of uh, by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Um, God bless you. We'll keep chatting online. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for all of Josue's followers, you know, follow me on Instagram. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we are supposed to say this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. So yeah, should, I so, give my, should I give him my, my, my stuff or will you put it in the in, in the description? Hey, like, what's going on? Can you add in the comments? Can you do you have a little place to add in the comments oh, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm horrible at saying those things and click a link here and follow us and, and put the, the your private chat. Okay. Blood IG. I don't even know my own ID and I'm telling people to follow me. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. Hey, I added the link to the um an IG is port seven. Okay, so I'm adding the links to the Facebook page. It won't go into my profile, but it will go into the Empathy Cafe profile. The exactly. blog is port slash, I mean, port dash seven.com and IG is port seven. Yeah. Thank you, man. All right. See you guys. Peace and love. So, this was uh, our time together in one on one with Alex. Remember that everybody's got a story that can change your heart, and your story matters. See you next time.